Hi guys, my name now, that's what I call a talk show. And what a show we have for you today, but before we go any further, we just want to give a massive shout out to everyone listening on, well, <laughs> this is the big thing, on Trans, Trans Radio, Radio UK. UK. So if you're out there, Trans Radio UK, we want to say, hello, we think you are all awesome and we are so excited to be able to reach a bigger audience. We are, absolutely. And we really hope that you enjoy the show. We really, really do. And what a show we have. We do. What a show we do have. Jam-packed. We have not one. Not two. Three. Gender Quakes. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> we have the stars of Gender Quake joining us tonight. One at a time because we don't want it to be too busy. Exactly. You know, Safi is the there. Saffron, hello Saffron, she's there. Yes. Um will be joining us um soon as well. Also um Howie and, and Campbell. Campbell. Very, very exciting. But it is time for now that's what I call entertainment. Who's been watching RuPaul? Obviously, we oh, Well, obviously I have, and then I had to catch up here on it, as always. She tries to say she's watched it, like she hasn't watched it, guys. She doesn't watch it. I have seen this picture. Yeah, she has, just by luck. Just a shout out as well to everybody that's here mm-hmm. watching, and to Howie, to Campbell, and to Saffron. Keep sharing the video while we do our entertainment bit, and just let's get this busy, and let's get our viewers high. So share, share, share. So, unfortunately, if it's white, Steel and salty. <laughs> it's probably a cracker. Oh, Ashanti away. Oh, it was so sad. She literally tried up like she tried her she best. She did, she did. And her best wasn't good yeah. enough. And, but she went on such a massive journey. I think she really struggled showing her emotions and dealing with them. <laughs> well, I like the fact that in the episode they touched upon the whole like your like evil voice in the back of your mind, mm-hmm. and I love that because that totally touched upon like mental health and how it does affect you. Because I, I I have that voice who's like you know you're not good enough, and then it does eat away at you in situations, argumentative situations, relationship situations. You can hear that voice in the back of your head, and you're just like shut the hell up, and it just is there, and it's so so bad. But let's face it, Eureka. Wipe the floor with everyone. Oh, wow. She is my winner. <coughs> Eureka has got to win. She's going to come round to Eureka winning. She's got to come round to Eureka winning. I think I will yes, come round. All in all, real Paul this week was good. Ashanti was on the show as well, so that was awesome. I loved <laughs> Aquarius' look. Yes. The bones, the oh. bones on the back. I was like, yes, that is amazing. Oh, yeah. I totally Master saw piece. high fashion. I was like, high fashion straight mm-hmm. away. So for me, that was, that was the top. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She won. Yeah, Rika was amazing, but oh wow, I was just like, yeah, mm, amazing. But we do need to touch upon another program that we've been glued to. Oh. Who's been watching Humans? Amazing. It is so good. It is like the world we live in now and how it actually could be. Like exactly. the craziness of the uh, isolation and all that stuff. I mean, Jossie wasn't a fan at first. I was. Not. I converted her. I watched the whole entire series within two days, and I do not binge watch. Binge watch as as a rule. But I, I just think with humans, it kind of does represent ha- what what marginalised groups can go through. Mm-hmm. Go through. So if a society was to become like humans, that, that could happen, but it could happen to people not synthetics. The synthetics represent the other, if that there. makes sense. Absolutely. Absolutely, I agree. Um, it does represent the other. And it also represents what some minorities do go through still. You know, we do feel liberated, etc., but there's a point where it's just not really working. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mean, it's great. I think everyone needs to go check it out. Go give it a watch. It's on Channel 4 it on is. Thursdays, I believe. Thursdays. Nice I up. watch it on Catch Up, so yeah, I'm not too I'm sure about that. Well. Oh, look at look. It's like yeah. episode series one of RuPaul. <laughs> the... so blurry. Oh! oh. And we're back. <laughs> um, yeah, but humans, unbelievable. Take, give it a watch. It totally gives that, like, deep sense of, oh, I get that. And also, for you guys out there, the last episode of sense Oh, I don't know. Was in. Was it, well, you're going to be at the camera if you don't come forward. sense is amazing. It is everything and anything. It is totally touching upon everything that I'm harnessing and working with today. Equality, equal world for everybody. Check that out, guys. www.equalworldworldequal.com. So, moving on, we've got a very exciting announcement. 
I'll be presenting the Alternative Edinburgh Fashion Week next, uh, this Friday, the 15th, Friday. Friday. Um, in Edinburgh. It is sold out, but we're very excited about it. The support is there. We've got websites and stuff on Facebook. Go check it out, guys. Go drop it a like. And we've also got a very exciting day. We are going to the Curious Arts Festival. Yes, Curious Arts is a, obviously it's a theatrical arts festival um, that is in the northeast, which is it showcases um, I would say queer performers, LGBT plus. Yeah, definitely, and allies. And allies as well. And um, there's some fantastic events going on, and we are going to the Vogue Ball. <laughs> yes, we'll be at the Vogue Ball, darling. And yes, that is something we are really looking forward to. The Curious Arts Festival is on from the 1st of July to the 8th of July. It's in various locations of the Northeast, mostly Northern Stage, Alphabetti, Spaghetti Theatre. Um, I think there's some things at the Baltic. And there's some things at Seven Stories. So definitely, definitely give Curious Arts Festival a like on Facebook. Also, somebody else quite special <laughs> is coming to Newcastle. Oh, yes. This is amazing. What's Sorry, guys. Called? I'm just trying to invite Campbell. What, what's her name? Vanji. 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 Miss Vanji is coming to Newcastle with Club Kids. It's going to be awesome. Big it up to Andrew Hall. He's doing and making waves. When is it, Jossie? 28th of August. Oh. And it looks set to be an amazing show. It is actually Alexis Mateo with Vanji. <coughs> Vanji. So, we love Vanji. Just to give it out to everyone as well, go check out the Club Kids website and the Club Kids Facebook to get tickets. It is going to be epic. Also, Campbell's just joined us. So, Campbell, if you just want to share the show so we can build up the audience, you too, um, Howie and Safran, and we'll just try and bring Campbell in. We will. Obviously, it won't work because it never does. Invite news in your Take it away, Jossie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do that. I love technology, by the way. Yeah. It hates us. It so this we always muddle through. We do. We always get through. Nothing really bothers us. Okay, yeah. um, Campbell, if you can hear us, can you just um, request to be in the video? It should be like a little green symbol, I think, is at the bottom. That'll be the easiest option, because I can't find anything. <laughs> can you see that, um, Campbell? Are you there? Well, I think when we're waiting for Campbell to go on, we should maybe share some of our <coughs> thoughts on Gender Queer. Oh, uh, well, Gender Queer was great. It was the debate really was a total show. failure, in my opinion. False. Um, but Gender Queer was really good. It was really kind of up to date of how it should be. Um, few, you know, mishaps as always for every show. But what can we say? I mean, let's bring them on. It showed how inclusive um, we can be. Oh that yeah, makes, massively. That makes sense. Absolutely. I'm just bringing Campbell Let's on now. Before we can get her on. I'm crossing the floor. I'm crossing the floor. That's an eye. No. <laughs> Requested. I'm loving your hair. Oh, thanks. I got it done at the Face House by Natalie. Um, it's in Wall's End by Gueria. But yeah, thanks. Campbell should be joining us in a few seconds. We just had an hour. Hi. How are Hello. you? I'm good, how are you? Really good, I love that top. Oh, thank you. So cute. <laughs> okay, so welcome to now that's what I call a talk show. Thank you. Get yourself comfortable, that's what we, we, we're we always shaking about. So <laughs> let's just dive straight into it. Following the success of Gender Queer, and it was a success, how do you feel that the show did come across? And also, how the debate then um, went. Do you feel the debate was actually a good debate or was it not a very good debate? Mm -hmm. But like, tell us, how, how do you feel? Um, well, I'm really, really happy of how the show went um, mm -hmm. but um, and how well it was received. Um, but in terms of the debate, it was a bit of a mess. Um, and I can't even tell you, like, being there, it was so uncomfortable. And every single person said exactly the same thing. Like, the atmosphere there was just so tense. And yeah, it was just not a nice environment to be in. And I feel like it's kind of put like a dampen on like the Genderquake show now because now everyone associates Genderquake with the debate and they're like, yeah. oh my God, it was so bad. when like, then they're talking about the debate and it just really frustrates me that it's kind of been like tarnished with the horrendous debate. It was, in my opinion, it was a bit of a shit show. I mean, 
when we were here and people shouting things, when the camera kind of went round, we saw your faces. We were kind of like, even Josie said, why are they not on the panel? Yeah, we like, we expected you guys to be on the panel and not yeah. the people that weren't even on the show. It was so strange. Why 100%. Was they, they should have trans people on the panel, not people that have outwardly spoken against trans people. Like, it just invites so much discrimination. And especially the people in the audience, like, they were, from what I had encouraged to heckle, um, the trans um I can imagine that with I can imagine that with a show. It just seemed quite an unfair debate. It just seemed a really unfair debate to me. It it was not a debate it, in the slightest. Yes. I mean, it was a it, good it was more of like, oh let's put extreme feminists extreme feminists against trans women and let's just see what happens. Like it, there was no kind of like thought behind it. But other than that, like I'm really happy with the Gen Quick show and the way like Channel Four did handle the show, but just not mm -hmm. the debate at all. It wasn't, it wasn't. But we've seen any time that like a transgender person is like in the media and um, they mm. always kind of do become like a bit of a trans role model, sort of a activist kind of thing. Um, yeah. Do you see that, if, if you experience that yourself, that like you've kind of been seen as being like a role model? Um, and if so, do you think that you represent just trans women or are you more for representing all women? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, I, I wouldn't consider myself a role model as such, but I mean, after um, Genderquake, I got such like an influx of like messages saying how I inspired someone or how I inspired them or how the show has helped them. So I guess that would make me a role model in that sense. But you know, I, I do want to be like, I don't want to be a voice for trans people, but I do want to get my voice out there and like represent people in a way. And to answer your question, I would say, I, I would represent more trans women than women because obviously trans women are women, but what I mean is like um, more trans women would be able to relate with me than, you know, a, um, a woman, so. We get that and we, we, can, we can see that point. Did you feel in the, in the in Gender Quick show when um, the trans guy was outed, do you feel that could have been handled better than it was handled? Yeah, I definitely think it could have been handled so much better. I actually didn't know that Marcus asked Romero if he, if he was trans until I watched mm. the show myself. So in terms of Marcus um, outing Romario, I definitely think it could have been handled better. And even like at the beach, when I watch it back, when me, Howie, Charlie were kind of like talking about it, like I was like, oh my God, like I feel really bad. And looking back, then I would have probably reacted differently, but we were just so shocked, so. Well, that is so refreshing that you can mm. say that because it is the case when you're in a situation, sometimes your actions don't actually go with what you would usually do. And people can kind exactly. of interpret that as a bad thing. But when you watch, not not in any disrespect, but as a younger lady that you are, um, it's just learning and growing. And even now you've watched it back and went, I shouldn't have said that. And I think that's great. I can tell you, I think that's really great. Well, they do say hindsight. Yeah, like, you know, we all make mistakes. That I look back at that scene and... Like, oh my God, I'm cringing so much. Like, why did I say that? But, um, you know, um, I think we knew after that we could have handled it so much better. And, but you know, you're, when you're in front of cameras, it's kind of like you behave almost differently to how you would if it was without the cameras, because you feel you have to kind of like react to certain things. So it's definitely like different to how you'd react on a day to day yeah. basis to something like that. So we noticed a little bit of romance blossomed um, <laughs> on Gender Queer. And we just want to, we just want right. to very much agree with you. Howie's a beautiful woman. She is all my friends, Fancy Howie. Like she's a, she's a beautiful woman. Oh, she's and as a heterosexual trans lady, I obviously would never go with a woman, but me and Josie even went, probably oh, would, probably would. Probably would. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, so, that's very me in the house, very word. <laughs> were, you, were you shocked at your attraction to a trans, uh, to a, um, a lesbian, um, a woman, of course, and also what are your thoughts on yourself dating another trans person? So a trans, um, a trans man, um, could you um, and would you um, date a trans mm. man? But what, what, what caused the, the, the sudden romance? So I'd never ever been attracted to girls ever. Like oh, I've only ever gone out of man, um, men and going into the house, I was like, the last thing that's gonna happen is me fancying a girl. 
And then it kind of like, how he walked in, I thought she was really pretty, but I didn't think anything of it. And then as time went on, I was like, I really like her. I think we're at the pub and she was, she kind of like took the lead and was like, oh, do you want a Bloody Mary? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, I really did like her on the show, but she's, but we're very, very good friends now. Um, but to answer your question about, would I go out for a trans man? Yeah, sure. I think now my sexuality is a lot more fluid and I would be open to um, different genders to perhaps I would before. But now I do have a boyfriend. Um, but, you know, in, if, God forbid, anything bad happened, in the future, of course, I would, you know, I would be more open now as to before, I would have probably said absolutely categorically, categorically no. But now for me, it's more about the person than the gender, 100%. So after everything that's happened, what is next for you? What's happening? Are you at any big event? Are you doing any of the prides? Do you have any other TV appearances coming up? We need exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm doing an event on the 30th of June, which I can't say anything about. They said that we're not allowed to, but um, it's for like a, cha a trans charity. Um, and then I'm also doing Brighton Pride, one of the official parties with Howie actually and Charlie and Brooke from the show as well. So we're, um, it's called Queer Prom, and they basically raise money for LG, an LGBT charity. And it's, you know, when it's for transgender youth or LGBT youth who didn't get to go to their prom, or they didn't get to go as their authentic self, so they have like drag well, performances. I did, I did make a note of this to expect my invitations. So I expect my invitations. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll send you an invite. <laughs> and do you have any other TV, other TV things coming up? Sorry. Do you have any other TV um, appearances coming up? Um, not that I know of right now, but um, who knows what the future might hold. I mean, I'm holding out for, um, I still won't say, but um, who knows? <laughs> I, I understand what you may be holding out for, but don't you go eating any grasshoppers or bugs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm quite um, famous enough for that. <laughs> well, come on. Well, I, I, oh, she good. couldn't eat the bugs. Well, Campbell, it has been a pleasure. You've been amazing. And we really, really appreciate oh, thank you. you. Oh, no, thanks. It's been lovely speaking to you both. Not a problem. Thank we will you. share everything with you later. And thank you so much. Keep watching. Keep sharing. Let's grow the audience, okay? Okay, Pat. I'm going to stay and watch Howie and Saf, so. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Lovely. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. So yeah. pleasant. I really like what she said about, um, you know, in hindsight. And that's like, well, he's I love that. Yeah. I love that. Sometimes I ponder that about myself. If I think that I've probably, after um, talking to Howie, I'll probably be like, hey, yeah. girl. I think because of the, the situation that we're in, we've yeah. not really been in that situation where we've been with a lot of LGBT people. In everyday life. Oh yeah, because we're such do. wallflowers and we don't leave the house. No, but you know what I mean. But let's move forward because yeah. we want to get yeah. Harry on the show. Yeah, and also we want to say to everybody <laughs> on Trans Radio UK, we hope you're enjoying the show. We hope you are enjoying everything. Um, Howie, if you want to request to join the show, it should be at the bottom. Um, the little green button, just ask to join now. I'll, um, I'll bring you on. Oh yes, that was very interesting. Oh, she should so go in the show. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <Can we? I'll laughs> you. Oh, I just couldn't. Oh, it's yeah. the bugs. Ooh. It's the bugs. I mean, I'm a very picky eater. <laughs> I'll just try and find her. Uh... There oh. she is. Oh, it's all right. She's just ahead of us. And that's what this was going to It's going great. Connection. <laughs> the show's <laughs> dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're just having Howie, guys, so be prepared for the beauty. Oh, we did totally like her. She was so lovely. Oh my god, yeah. Like, yes. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna have a drink. Look, I like totally jump off screen. Yeah. So, did you feel? Um, I totally liked the fact that she, um, Campbell said, "Oh, when looking back, oh, it was very much a case of." what she felt after watching her back. We're just adding, um, and there she is. There she is. Hello. Uh, 
Hi, are you alright? Yeah, really, really good. How are you? Good, yeah, good. I've not, I've not done this before, so I was like, I feel a bit of a technophobe going on. Well, just try and get your put phone in a nice position. That, that right? Don't worry, you look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Comfortable? Yeah. Comfortable. Okay, so let's just dive straight in. So it's clear to see that you flourished on Genderqueer. You showed uniqueness, generosity, and empathy. But we want to know, do you feel that you came across well and you represented who you are and who you stand for well? Um, yeah, I think I had in my heart, honestly, you can say that I was, I was, totally, I was totally myself. Um, uh, and... To be fair, like I was quite shocked at like um, the positive like feedback because when I when we watched it like briefly, I just didn't think I was really in it that much, and which is absolutely fine. I was very like happy like that kind of thing, and I was just kind of like you know you know just like I just love being part of the whole thing as a whole, um, and and I, I think. I think, yeah, like, I, I don't think I would, I wouldn't have changed any of the things now watching back a bit, like what Campbell just said, like, you change, but no, I think, I think I did, I think I represented myself as, as best as I, I could at that time, yeah. And did you also agree with what Campbell said about um, out in the trans guy, how it was done, it was just, it wasn't done correctly, do you, do you, do you look back now and think, oh, I, I wish I'd stepped in a little bit, or we could have handled that better? Um... I think, yeah, like watching it is completely different. My my head is completely different with a lot of things, are even from after show, from just stuff that I've learned and listening to stories anyway. Um, but it's so true. Like when you're in that situation, I was so far not expecting that at all. And I was even, you know, saying to the producers, like I picked probably like that a morning before that, saying, "Why did you not put a trans guy in here?" I think that's really unfair. And they were like, "Oh, no one applied" or something like that. So it was so it was it was honestly so shocking. Like you know when that kind of happened, and like we kind of acted the way we did, and that was completely like completely real. But like Campbell said, in hindsight, yeah, I should have obviously. I think you know we should have obviously done. You guys only see obviously what the camera gets to show yeah, you and stuff. We know, after, we know all about that, yeah. Yeah, because after that we did, we went to the pier. We had fish and chips, and we all like spoke and stuff like that. But it was still obviously we didn't really like, necessarily speak about it because of, you know, the kind of the way that Romari wanted to like show us. Rather, than he didn't feel the need that he had to like you know, to, you know, explain you know, real off his story. I think we like we were all like kind of a bit, bit like, well, what do we do? Like, do we like do we spring it up? Do we not? Like, you know, yeah. it was we all kind mm -hmm. of in that position. I was going around the house thinking I was mental. I was like, I've got, I felt like I had like, you know, me, we had this little bit of a secret. And I know obviously there's a bit of me talking to like Marcus and stuff, but what you, what you see is what everything happened like before that night, you know, when I was, you know, talking and stuff, um, you know, because, you know, people were still trying to work with Mario out. And I just felt like I was just like, oh, just, I like have to say this because I don't want to hear, you know, you know, bad things said about, you know, stuff and, and you know people talking about something um so that's why i kind of like said it like that but obviously it looks like you know we all kind of speak behind his back but i don't think it was handled very well at all like in regardless in regards to like obviously a, I, approaching i didn't know that uh, marcus went up and spoke to him until i saw the show a bit like campbell yeah. as well yeah, she said but but that's what, what my issue with that is i totally agree it could have been handled better but also the environment he was going into he, he, he should have totally, in my opinion, the environment he was going in, he should have known it's going to it's gonna come out. Let's just be honest, because we're trying to yeah. represent. Because I'm totally fine with not telling people I'm trans and wanting to keep it to myself. That's fine. But when you sign up for a show yeah. like that, I kind of somewhat felt, I didn't even know, I don't even know if anyone did, but I felt the producers kind of said, oh, we're not going to tell people, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. So it, it turned into the, I like get a surprise, and for me, it killed a little bit because it just made it just made drama that wasn't probably needed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I completely get that now. From you know, and talking to a lot of my family and and people like you guys and everybody saying it, they 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 get where Mark, they see Marcus's point as well. Like he's like you know saying not not what he did, but like you know like a bit like what you're saying like. You know, you should have. Why didn't you tell us? Like, you should have said it. Like, 
in that kind of thing. So I do, I do like, I do get that. Like we watching it back now and stuff, but like, it, it, it's just really difficult when you're in that situation to like Imagine. think of a, a wrong thing to do because of because of the situation. Like I said, the situation. I, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I feel I feel TV is very different to the real world, and things are heightened, and everything gets a bit crazy. But I don't feel it represented anyone in a bad way. But how did you feel the debate went? Did you feel that that was mm. just a total waste of time? I think like it was it was it, it was it was so awkward to be in there. Like I I, I obviously I'm a lesbian. You know I'm. Happy, you know me, that kind of thing. You're a les. You're a les. <laughs> what, what we have lesbians on the show? Oh. What? <laughs> no, no, carry on. Carry I know. On. What? Um, I. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. Um, yeah. So that was just so awkward to be in there, and obviously I'm close with Campbell, Brooke, Charlie, Romario, anyone you know like that. that and I felt so almost like protective like, over them, and just discuss what you guys didn't hear. Like, is all of the people behind us and, and those women people, whatever. I've never seen people like that in my life anyway. And it was just so awkward. We wanted to go to the toilet at one point and I felt like nervous to get up. And at the end, when the camera came to me, I was genuinely in shock because I, one, I didn't know the camera was going to come to me. And two, I was just like, I, what am I listening to? And listening to these hecklers, like football, football. They were like, literally like, it was almost like being out of, an old football racism match or something like that. It was Would you not think horrific. those people were very hand-picked? It was kind of like, yeah, we're going to get the yeah, nastiest, yeah. nastiest ones. Um, only in relation, yeah. because we actually had an interview la um, two weeks ago with um, the Venice Allen. Venice Allen. And we discussed things, and I didn't agree with things she said, and she didn't agree with things we said, but we had a diplomatic discussion, and we just felt that they hand-picked the worst. And what made it shocking is, why you guys weren't on the panel? Yeah, it was like so sense. stupid. I, 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 yeah, it was, it was, it was just purely for entertainment, and um, it was just, it, it was just like, it wasn't. I don't think it was very fair, and it, and it almost looked like everyone's got issues more than it was just having a discussion, and mm -hmm. and it shouldn't have been like that. Like, I love talking about it to people. I've got loads of my friends that have been like, they don't get it, they don't get and they're not like pro but now they're watching the show they they understand it and that and they respect it and that's all that like what all i wanted to like like get from this and, and from the show and for people to see is just about like respect and acceptance it doesn't matter you don't have to try and read a book on it and be become a become a lecturer or you know a professor in it because that's not the real world it's just about respect and i think like unfortunately when like, it just didn't show up when, uh, when we had Venice on our show, Faye just said, um, it was two weeks ago she was on, we don't really agree with everything that she says. But obviously she was going on about the divide between um, cisgender women and transgender women. But more specifically, there does seem to be a bit of a divide with cisgender lesbians and transgender lesbians. I'm just quite interested on like your thoughts of that. Like, Is it transphobic for a lesbian to say, I'm not interested in someone who is pre off transsexual because personally I, I don't think people should be shamed for preferences but there's ways of going about it I think a lot of the radical feminists are just mean I think everything everything we hear in the media in the on the papers etc it's all radicalized and it's all made to be such a big deal I don't agree not the reality. I don't agree that anybody should be dictated and told they are phobic if they don't want to be with somebody because that's total personal preference I personally wouldn't be with um, uh, a guy if, if they were trans and they hadn't had surgery because my personal preference is is a man. I'm not saying that they're not a man, but to me, yeah. they have something that I would I would identify mm -hmm. as a feminine um, part. They may not identify as a woman, but that that's my personal preference. Obviously, I'm not transphobic because how could I be transphobic? But it's just a preference, and a lot of people seem to get the argument. So do you do you feel there is a divide between um, trans females who identify as lesbians and cisgender uh, cis um, females who identify as lesbians, and um, because the, the board doesn't seem to cross over? And how do you feel about how lesbians are represented in the media? Is there enough? Um, I th okay. So the 
you know, transphobic, that, that kind of thing. I do think there is a divide, yeah, 100%. Um, because I've, you know, I've been kind of going out into lots of gay nights and lesbian nights for a, year, like a long time. And, you know, since, you know, I think I could first drink. And I've never really come across a transgender lesbian, actually just like kind of in the night as well. Yeah. It's, it's always either seems quite like seen and like those kind of stuff. Not saying that there, there might be or whatever, but I've not really... Come, a, come across it necessarily. And I think that is something that as the lesbian community needs to really work on and, you know, and to make, you know, make some, there should be some sort of event. I know it's obviously that they, they, there could be like different opinions from different sides, but just to get everybody to kind of together because of, you know, I, don't, I personally don't see there's no difference. Like for me, like if that person says that that's what they are and what their preference is, then that's it. Like that's what they are. That's that's who they are. They're a lesbian. Like for me, I don't care if a girl is a girl. I'm fine if it's a girl. Then they're, you know they're a lesbian. And then they like it shouldn't really matter. And I do think there should be. I think lesbian. I think like my girlfriend was like laughing with me. She was saying like, oh, like lesbians are so last year. Like you know that kind of stuff. Now it's all like moving. You know as that kind of thing is like because we laugh about it. And I was like, yeah. Like I feel like um, in one way, like there is quite a lot of like really you know like powerful lesbians out there like obviously Ellen and you know those kind of people who make you feel really really proud to be you know associated with them and and you know be like you know what I'm I'm I know I'm not one of those because I hate it but like I'm categorized either and we are doing good things and it's like that we are good people and I do think yes yeah, obviously there's always room for more there's always room for any of the rainbow community in um, positions of power and I think that that's one thing as a community as a whole, we should just support each other to get 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 any, anyone who's worthwhile being in those positions to those positions because at the end they, they represent something, you know, that is unique in itself. It do you do you not do you feel now that we could just do with it, just abolishing all labels and just be under all umbrella as equal mm. and just be part of an equal society of an equal world of if if everything just equal. Um, because that, that is how I look at it now. There's so many labels, there's so many different umbrellas, there's so many categories. And I'm fine for everyone to have their own label. That doesn't bother me in any way. But do you not think we could, now this day and age, we should just be equal. It just should be just equal. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. 100%. Like, I... Sorry, what did you say? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, li I, li I, li I would love that. And obviously... Yeah, because that would be like the ultimate utopia and that would be great. But, you know, it's the real world at the same time. And it's just like, oh, I don't think some of the people who aren't, you know, in this kind of mindset, they can't handle it, clearly, obviously. And, um, but yeah, but I, I think, I do think 100% meeting Saf, Saf taught me so much about labels, like that I didn't even know. And like, yeah. you know, everything, like, and made me want to learn more and research so much more um, in, into just kind of, you know, you know, gender neutral stuff and just know how much we do use labels. I identified it to me and it's just like, oh, like, you know, what, 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 when did we get to this? When did we get to this point where everybody has to be a certain way in a box with a label on it, with a price tag, with a sell by day, everything? Like, where, how did we get to this? Mm -hmm. yeah. a crazy thought yes. and I People think I think what I'm working on I did mention to you um, how he is I'm working with um, Equal Magazine which is all about equality across the board and what what we kind of see is you know the world as you just said the world's a dangerous place okay then that's fine well let's just live in the equal world and everyone else that doesn't want to live in the equal world that, that's totally fine we're not going to argue with you we don't need to but we really want to embrace equality and be, be who we are and if you don't I don't have a I don't have an argument but don't come and attack us and don't say horrible things and don't yeah. have like a, a an angry approach we can all discuss these things nowadays we're adults our generation in my opinion is the last sensible generation um, oh, of what listen. we're doing and I just think eventually hopefully one day I'll be giving you a call to say hey can you come and open equal pride where everybody is welcome, no matter what you are, who you are, where you're from, just come down here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I like. I think. 
I know there's lots of other prides, but I think pride is pride is like get is getting there because my brother and his friends like they're asking me, are you going to are you going to this pride? And they're completely like rugger buggers. Like, do you know what I mean they're rugby boys? They're like, are you going to go to this pride? And it's like, do you know what? That's so lovely to hear. And they're like, we, but they used to be like, oh, I'm I'm not going to pride because I'm not gay. Like you know that kind of stuff. now it's like well I've got my ticket I'm going you coming like and I and I love that thing. and it's celebration that's the thing we're already crossing over so there's so many prides there's always being gay all that type of different prides there's, there's pride pride we're already crossing over where the the straights are coming in and all that stuff so why don't we just be like okay let's just all support one big pride in different locations which is equal pride I think that's the way forward and I think it's exciting yeah. what we've got coming up. But the biggest question is, what is next for you? What do you have coming up that we need to look out for? Have you been approached by a big international modeling company? Are you, are you going on Orange is the New Black soon? Let's go. <laughs> um, nothing. Uh, well, like bits and bobs is prize season. So that's really fun. That's really exciting. Um, like uh, Campbell said, got that um, Brighton queer prom which i'm really really happy about and the, the charity is called mermaids so i yeah. started like a donating page on page yeah um and so which i'm just trying to hope to raise a bit of money like before that night as well to to you know um to, to donate to the charity because i think it's amazing what they you know they do and they stand for um i, I kind of want to get around the drinks in <laughs> i thought you were going to get around the drinks in i was like yeah that's a good idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> That too, yeah, I need to accept yeah. my funds for that. But no, um, I, I just kind of want to do a lot of like charity stuff, I think. I really want to, I just really like, one thing that the thing that I've got from this is just the overwhelming, like, lovely messages that I've got. And, you know, p people are like, really opening up and just telling them their stories, you know, their, their kind of what they're going through. And it's just maybe it's really triggered. It's actually, you know what, I, I actually really like helping people. And I really want to do more of more of that stuff so if um yeah just only anything like that but we shall see some bits and bobs in there um, well as i mentioned the... you're definitely going to be um coming into em now that's equal magazine i'm going to get something sorted out but i just want to thank you for joining us today it's been an absolute pleasure you've been great <laughs> um and we just want to thank you once again we're going to now go and see safi and yes. see what's going on <laughs> yes right okay yes. thank you very much for joining Bye, us see you, later, see you later darling Bye. Bye. I'm awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, then. So, sure. Savvy, if you want to um, request to join the show, um, the little bottom it should be green. Just click, and then I'll accept you. Perfect. Uh, I thought everything was really, really, really on point. Mm -hmm. Um, and just growth again. Like, mm -hmm. still, just oh well, from that show, I learned this and from this, mm -hmm. and I just think great. It's nice to hear people say that. There's yeah, one, anyway. one person I, I really hope does go on to do more, you know, as a mm -hmm. good influencer for the lesbian community. Because mm -hmm. um, I think she's great. We're just bringing Safi on um, now, we think. We'll have to cross all my fingers again. Oh, no. It's, <laughs> it's that time of the show. No answer from video. Poor. Oh, I think you'll have to re except also howie and campbell if you're still listening everyone else are there get sharing the um our video i'm gonna cancel oh, reapply way. just reapply to be in the video oh, it's technical stuff but we all love um the guests and we hope everyone out there on trans radio Season uk and um, is enjoying the show um if you you know if you want to see our faces, you can also see us on Facebook. Don't forget. Exactly. Now that's what I call a talk show. We are also on YouTube. Oh yes, we are. And, and Instagram Twitter. and Twitter and all yeah. the others. Um, Safi, if you just asked to be on, um, one more time. Oh, there we are. Right. Let's hope this works. Well, we're adding. Oh, but yeah, it's really great. It's really great to connect, and um, we do hope everyone on. Trans Radio UK is really enjoying it. We're hoping to pop on after the show and have a little chat. Might even take some calls if that's yeah. allowed. Um, I think it'll be very, very interesting. Oh, we're just waiting for it to accept. So did you feel that what's happening now as a in, in relation to how, how we were saying about lesbians and stuff? I thought that was really interesting how she thinks you how she even said, Oh well I go to events and 
there's no transgender lesbian. And it's like, yeah, is it, are they just not out? Um, are they not out? And do you know what I mean? Do you think there's a lot of um, lesbian fans always casting for the audience? And the that's true. Yeah, that is that's true. Uh, and then years ago, it been casting for the audience. Wow. Wow. That was a bit awkward when I went. Oh, no answer. We're just trying to bring... Oh, are you on your phone? We hope you're on your phone. Oh, hey! Hi! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. How are you guys? Really, really good. Really good. Really enjoying the show. It's been an exciting show with all you gender quick. Do you feel um, there is too much emphasis put on labels or is it a way of owning an identity? Do we really need labels anymore? I mean, like, unfortunately, in the world that we live in now, labels are really, really important to people, sort of obsessively so. Like, and, and even when, when, I, when I started to explore how I felt in my own head about myself, I only really uh, found non-binary and got that light bulb moment because that was like the closest thing to how I felt I was as a person. So it's like, I, uh, for me, I'm me, I'm Saffron. Like that comes before any label. Um, but at, at the same time, it's completely down to the individual. Like if you feel like you want to use that label, you go ahead and you use that label. Um, but like at the same time, you know, because labels can create solidarity, they can create unity in a community, but also at the same time, we don't need to obsess over those labels and, like, sort of define ourselves by a label because identity itself is so shifting and so fluid because, you know, I I look at myself and I'm like, yeah, I I use non-binary as a term, but then I also sort of use terms like androgene or um, agender and stuff. So, like... I used to be so obsessed about my label. I used to be like, hi, I'm Saffron, I'm non-binary. How are you? Um, But now it's sort of like, hi, I'm Saffron, I'm a person. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I'd say that's what I think about labels, yeah. Um, Well, we've seen that the visibility of non-binary people is becoming a lot lot more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Um, We've got shows, is it Billionaire or something? We have a non-binary character because the actor that plays that character is non-binary. They're in them, aren't just in the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. acting. Yeah, and she's in, she's in billions. She, well, they're yeah. in billions. Um, have it. And what what is that as well? Um, I I feel that the representation is actually starting it's to come starting. through, but not just come through on little dribs and drabs. Come through on such an empowering, big deal show like Billions. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's slowly but surely. It's it's happening slowly but surely. They've still got a long way to go, but I think just talking about it and just using those words like non-binary or talking about pronouns, because I think pronouns is a big issue that people just need to sort of listen listen to and just take it in. And yeah, it's all a bit surely it's happening. Do you ever feel with pronouns that some people can be a little bit oversensitive about them? Me personally, I'm the worst for making like accident she mistakes. Does. And, it, and because I, I probably don't care if someone makes an accident mistake. Obviously, if it's meant in malice and you know it's yeah. meant in malice and you've got that, I think you can get a feeling when someone accidentally does it, but you know it's on purpose. Mm. Um, do you feel that we could be a little bit less sensitive because sometimes people just genuinely make a mistake? Yeah, I get that. I get that people do make a mistake. Like people, you know, a lot of my close friends, they'll, they'll sort of trip up. But as long as, for me, as long as they don't make a massive deal out of it, because sometimes I'll go, yeah. oh, that's Saffron. She's, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just, like, just realise what you've done and then use the right pronoun and just learn from it. Um, but I, for me, yeah. for me personally, if someone gets upset by being misgendered, I can totally get why they get that upset. Because I was literally, um, what was that? Because I'm in Sheffield at the minute working at the festival. Um, and, you know, I had dude from one person and mam from another person. Um, and it just gets a bit confusing. It's like... Gender terms of address aren't needed at all. And if you don't know the gender or pronouns of someone, just use gender neutral ones. Like, I think that that's a culture that we should change because for some, I mean, I know it's like hashtag not all trans people, but whatever. But for some people, if they get that upset about it, that shows it's an issue we need to, we need to face. For me personally, 
if someone trips up or if someone doesn't know my pronouns, I'll let them know what my pronouns are. Like, just like, just try all you can. And uh, if, if you get it wrong, I'll correct you all. We'll help each other out. Like, that's for me. But I think I understand why people get so upset about it because it does kind of invalidate who you are as a person. That's how some people feel about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like they and their pronouns gets a lot of flack because people are like, yeah, but it's plural. Um, it's not singular. Um, but historically, it's been used as like a I singular think term. People need to learn manners. People need to learn manners. And if you don't know a pronoun, just what happened to the old, good old, excuse me? Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just, just exactly. What? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That is how simple it is. I'm not actually asking you to use the correct pronoun. Yeah. Just say excuse me. Like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Like, simple you... as that. Exactly. And it's like, if you go up to someone and you and you like sort of you go up to them and but by based on what they look like you're assuming their gender and it's like yeah but but women can wear suits and men can wear dresses if they want to that doesn't make them another gender it just makes them expressing their own personal identity and stuff so like just use gender neutral pronouns just like don't be like hey dude hey hey sir just be like hey you you know it's like it's not that hard <laughs> I feel, and I've seen, and I'm sure you did as well, at the debate after the Gender Queer program, that they use, they use pronouns as a weapon. Like, if you give someone ammunition, this is my metal. That's why, I, that's why if someone was to go, hey, mate, how you doing, bro? It's a long time I've seen you since you were Kevin. I'd be like, you're so sad. Mm. Bye, and walk away. And I kicked it off because I used to get, like, blow and tranny and stupid like male acronyms to refer to me yeah are you a gadget and he used to be a man and stuff so for me i just went i'm not going to care about that because i've noticed now the radical feminists or people who want to get here will use a negative pronoun as a weapon yeah and sometimes sometimes just be less sensitive because some idiot who is totally against you as a person calling you a blow when you identify as a woman don't let it upset you because they're an idiot. Mm -hmm. They're just an idiot for doing yeah, that. Do you know what I mean? I get that. Don't give them a weapon. I get that, but it's like, also like, you. it's so, I totally see why people do get that upset because thing, something, the thing about identity and about who you are is that's such a personal, emotional, it's full of feeling. It's who you are as a person and no one should be able to take that away from you. So when like sort of people who know sod all about who you are come and it's about power, that's what it's about. It is about power. It, and it's about feeling more powerful and having power over someone else's identity. So they do it on purpose to feel like a bigger person yeah, because yeah. their identity feels challenged. Um, and like, you know, I've, I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm at a university, so I'm kind of like in a bubble here because there's, there's so many accepting, I'm at Newcastle University, there's so many accepting people there who, who use the right pronouns without question. But obviously in the outside world it's a bit different and I just like having conversations with people and just telling them more about it and making them question the base level of sort of assu assuming someone's gender and and there's people who you know like TERFs like trans exclusionary radical feminists they're not worth my time a day I do not mm -hmm. understand why Jermaine Greer was on gender quake the live debate I cannot fathom it. I was screaming at the tv screen like you thought that I was like what Oh, no. yeah, she's yeah, a man. dusty old woman she does no like she that because like, and, and also that's the thing it was a it was called the gender debate but we shouldn't be debating people's gender or their existence it's a discussion it shouldn't be debate we, we are not here to sort of discuss and like debate someone's identity their identity is valid at the end of the day their identity is always going to be that identity like that was just a shambles that sh oh my god do you not think though that they picked the most radical? Like they, they no, went they not. went and hunted the ones that they knew would shout stuff, the ones that they knew would say stuff. Because we had a conversation in an interview with um, <laughs> Dennis Allen, mm -hmm. who was there, and we know she said sh sh like really bad shit in the past, but I didn't want to watch it because I would have an opinion on it. When we did the interview, she was very, very, very respectful to the point that we even noticed some of her allies in the radical feminist community stopped talking to her through it so yeah. it was like she tried to, to, to do an interview and even got shunned by the people that she was actually trying to support and stand up for right so they the, 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 to me for them their community just was was like, was it was just liquidized 
But them. if they would have put rational feminists and mm. trans people and rational trans feminist people and people and people and people, and people together yeah. to have a conversation, that's what it should have been about. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. It was just a bunch of, in my opinion, wild boars let loose in a row in a room on, a, you know, a, defenseless chickens who yeah. were sat there and people were shouting stuff and it was just like, this is bullshit. It's, but it wasn't a fair debate. Like, the, the non-binary person, they didn't really Exactly, speak. Like, exactly. I, 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 I they got, like, no coverage. Like, it was... I didn't. Why weren't you on it? Why weren't the gender <laughs> queer people on the panel? Well, like, I was... We don't understand. <laughs> I think that would have been... I mean, it would kind of fit in more with the actual whole two-part series that was the flagship show of the season. Um... But I think what they they knew what they were doing when they got Caitlyn Jenner and Jermaine Greer, who are two very big names, um, because that's going to get them views. And unfortunately, that's how it works still. That's how it works. They they want to get a debate, a discussion, like interaction, like disagreement. That's what they want. So when the words Caitlyn Jenner on there, it's like, yeah, OK, yeah, I'll watch it because Caitlyn Jenner's on it. But it's like it was a... It was a really sort of white panel. Um, Monroe did an excellent job. Monroe handled the situation so well, but when, when Monroe said, I want that person removed, they are transphobic, nobody did anything. Nothing, nothing was done. And it's like, what? You need to listen to trans people of colour, trans women of colour. Like, it was shocking. And then the non-binary person got, like, no screen time, no time to talk. Um, yeah, it was really badly done. Do you think that... Um... Do you think Mar Mar Mario was a, a like a, a settle? Yeah. The sorry. Do you think the trans guy in the show was a? Do you think oh, that was Mario a bit Mario? Mario. Do you think that was a bit of a stage thing for not to tell us and to be a big drama? Because now I look back and reflect on it, I, it seems that it was. Um, I think that Romario went into the house with very, very, very proud convictions, and he, you know, he's 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 talked about it before, and he's been like. Yeah, it was kind of like a social experiment to see if I could just be Romario. And like, that's a really interesting concept that I remember is Romario saying, do you ever stop being trans? That's something I'd never, because then Campbell says, oh, well, I'm going to be trans. I ask, that, I ask that every single day of my life to some people out there who are so hung up on, I'm transgender. And I'm like, when do you, be, when do you become Stephanie or Sarah? When are you going to just become that person? I not let the label on you. What he said in that C M um, episode resonated so much with me. Yeah. To loads of people that we supported, and the dimensions of support groups. You have a support group, but you tend to have a dictator or a leader. And we've discovered that um, that there's a lot of dictators within these support groups, and that's not how a support group should be managed. It should be a total equal world, an equal um, conversation. And for me, it just. It just resonated home, what he said, when do you just stop being trans? And I, I was sat and I was like, God, it's so true. Because I live my life as Faye Louise Burden. Mm -hmm. I don't live my life as transgender girl Faye. Yeah. I do things within the community because I want people to understand, like, let's live in an equal society. That's why I work too much with Equal Magazine and all the other charities mm -hmm. and all the other um, companies I'm working with. And that's why... It, it resonated home. Did you did you feel like oh yeah? When do you just become you? When 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 does that happen? Did you did you did it resonate with you as well? <clears throat> it made me question how how I saw myself and how I saw identity. Like at the same time, you know, labels aren't necessary. But if you want to use that label, if you want to be proud of that label, you hang on to that label as much as you want. Because that's a, that's the thing is is we should be equal in that we should all be accepted for what we believe in. Like, you know, if it's, if it's hateful, if it's, if it's negative, then no. But in terms of gender identity, if that's who we are, that's who we are and no one else can change that and no one else should have the power to change that. Um, but I left the house because uh, I'm, I'm like a big activist in Newcastle and I've like done a campaign at Newcastle University and things like that. Um, and I was like very hit up on language and very hit up on, on labels. But that made me question like, well, at the end of the day, I'm not just non-binary, I'm saffron before I'm non-binary. That's who I am as a person. Yeah. And then, like, I'm very proud to be someone who goes against the grain, someone who is... And, like, I, I spend a lot of... I've talked about this with my friends so many times. 
I spend so much time being like, hmm, but am I a girl though? Am I just doing this for attention? Like because of how the media perceives people like me, it's like, oh, you're a special snowflake, blah, 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 blah. Um, but like, I think to myself in my head, um, no, I'm, I'm neither. I'm not. I'm, I'm me. I'm me. At the end of the day, I'm me. And uh, I'm proud of who I am. And, you know, before any label... What's it, what's it, like, what's it like being you? Oh, that's a that's a deep question. Um <laughs> one in your love <laughs> Um what is it like being me? Um I think every every single different non-binary person's experience is different and unique. And that's what makes it so like, you know, wonderful and beautiful. Um but for me, yeah, I still feel I still feel confused. Um that's not a universal thing like non-binary people aren't confused but me I am um because oh I, I spent so long thinking I was a trans man um for a long long time I thought that and when I was a when I was a bairn uh you know I'd stand up when I pee and uh I'd make people call me Ronnie and things like that you know like from a young age I was challenging that kind of fixed fixed binary and mis- I mean I like you know the, the standing up wean oh, thing never ended well child. You are difficult child. <laughs> You're a difficult child. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like my twin sister is straight and cisgendered. You know what I mean? Like I had to be the difficult one. Um, but yeah, like, well, do you sorry, do you do you feel that as we've all we've both said, and you and everyone, yeah, identify as whoever you want to be, be whoever you want to be. But in society that we live in, the world we live in, the world we're a part of. In our world, I always feel because there's definitely a few couple of worlds around. But do you feel that predators could abuse that whole "oh, I'm this, I'm that" to get within within a, within a safe place for everybody, women, men, everybody, to to abuse that? Do you think predators could abuse that? We do, and we do worry about that. But we don't think people should be making a big song and dance about it. We can just put a few precautions in place that are accepted on both sides, um, including everyone for everybody's safety on every level. This isn't just a toilet debate about identifying <coughs> who you are. This is and everyone and every place and every situation. Um, I feel you need to be respectful of the identity you choose and identify as, but I also feel you should be respectful of that identity safe place where you're going inside of, regardless of how anyone feels. You need to be respectful of the place you're entering into. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. And like that sort of, that argument always seems to come up uh, in gender debates uh, of like, yeah, well, <clears throat> in terms of the toilet one, um, people were like, oh yeah, but, but people who want to attack people could abuse that kind of accessibility. And like that kind of reduces the whole argument to something that isn't, isn't what it should be. That is a very, 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 very small minority, almost a, 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 a very, very small. And, and to sort of, and, and a lot of um, <clears throat> sort of TV channels conflate predators and trans people together and bring them into this debate. And mm. it's like, yeah, but they're not connected at all. Right. Like that's not, they're, they're two separate issues. And it's a very, I don't, I, I personally have not heard any news reports where that has happened. Um, I've seen, like, uh, I don't know if you watch Transparent. Can we just jump in on that just so you can have an understanding? Sorry, sorry. You haven't seen any press reports, and we haven't seen many press reports, we have to be honest. Mm -hmm. But But there is a worry that because of, as you're, I'm not referring to anyone, any similarities, I'm referring to a situation, not a person. As we all know, with the Rochdale um, ring, paedophile ring, um, they didn't out them in the press and in the police because they were worried about discrimination, oh, etc. Fear, fear of offending the community. <clears throat> We've noticed, and we actually have came across it when we do do our research, um, that there it is out there, but it's just cho- not it's chosen not to be reported on. And we worry that they're doing that because they're worried that they're going to offend the community. Um, and... Through that, it kind of it does it does have a worrying situation because in five years' time, I dread to think that suddenly there's an influx of well, lots of predators did abuse this. We just weren't allowed to talk about it. Right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Trans people, non-binary people, straight people. 
I'm not saying they're predators. Are predators that will try and abuse it maybe aren't getting as pushed to the front of the press because as, as happened in the past, the government are worried about offending a community. But it's like, <clears throat> do you know what I mean? What we, what we, that's like, you know, intense and stuff. But what we should be focusing on is like people like me, uh, who's pre who's how I present myself is it doesn't necessarily go along with sort of society standards. I've been called a paedophile. I've been called a predator. I've been kicked out of public toilets. I've been spat at in the street. You know, I've had those labels of predator and weirdo and perv placed upon me because I tried to use a woman's toilet. Um, but because I'm using a woman's toilet and I've got a vagina, that means I'm following society standards, right? So, like, I don't know. It's, it's about how people sort of look. But, you know, what we should be focusing on is, is like, the amount of trans people that are, are called those labels and are referred to as and reduced to as those labels is sickening. It's absolutely sickening. And, you know, that links to sort of the concept of passing. That, you know, obviously a lot mm -hmm. of uh, trans men and trans women, um, they feel more safe. They feel more like themselves when they pass as a gender that they, that they identify as. But if you don't want to pass, if you don't want to, so you don't have to conform to those standards you can present yourself however you feel you want to present yourself, however you feel you are, whatever expresses yourself the best. And these, it's, it's, we need a change of culture, you know, we need a change of culture. Like, just because you look a bit, little bit different doesn't mean you're a predator. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't mean that you're trying to get into a, a safe space and, and, and that all sounded well, Jordy, then did you hear that? Safe space, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, like, it doesn't- we, we agree with you. We agree with you on that. We agree with you on the whole thing. But, what we what we watch happening is these radical feminists will jump up and they're like, they're all paedophiles, they're gonna abuse you, you're gonna get killed. And if they would just shut up for a second uh -huh. and we could talk, yes, and we, we could say, say that's, not that's not the reality, chill out a second. We're not saying let's just open our safe places to everybody. We're just saying, do you wanna just chill out about your crazy accusations of all these predators? We get that predators are about, they're everywhere. And oh, yes, we'll like... try and prevent it, yeah. just like you would in any situation. Mm -hmm. But we, we have our limitations, just like companies, businesses. They can't just demolish all the toilets and then put loads of new cu cubicles in. Some businesses couldn't practically afford it. Yeah. So it would cripple a lot of companies and businesses. But we need to be really realistic that it does need to be a safe environment. But also, not everybody's going to try and abuse it. Yeah. It is out there, so be wary of it. And if 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 people come into our environment um, and are, are predators, I think as humans we should be able to spot it. And if we can't, then we need to wake up a little bit because the world isn't full of unicorns and daisies mm. and chocolate bunnies. Like it's not that easy, and you need to wake up, regardless if it was a man's toilet or a woman's toilet. A predator can walk in. So any time, any time. Yeah. Just because you've got man or woman on a toilet doesn't mean they're going to use. It. They're just going to walk in. If you're a predator, you're just going to walk in. If you've got purpose, that's you're just going to go and they're do not it. Let that you're stop not them, are they? Yeah. You're not going to think, oh, it says woman. I'll just put my knife away. <laughs> I'll just head off. Like it, it's not like that. If, if someone's going to go and do something, they're, they're going to go and do it. it. Exactly. This is what people. I think in an ideal world, the whole bathroom because I find it quite bizarre. I think, why not just have male a female in a neutral so then everyone is happy? Yes. That would be the idea. Preach it. <laughs> it's probably going to cost a lot of money, but everyone's happy then. Everybody's happy. And Debate if, over. <laughs> if everybody isn't happy, then just wake up and smell the coffee because exactly. it's 2018. But moving on, the trans umbrella. As we've noticed, non-binary is in the trans umbrella. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's time to stand alone? Because we feel that non-binary is such a unique, a unique um, identity and a valid identity that should it celebrated. should be celebrated in its own right. Because only our, uh, only what we see. Because being transgender, you, you, you go and you identify as that gender. But, in, in Limerick's terms. Mm -hmm. Being non-binary, mm -hmm. you're 
fluid, you want to, you know, it, it's who you are, and it, and and it, it's not, it shouldn't be anyone to say you've got to decide, you've got to do this, because you should just be able to be who you are. Mm-hmm. But then also, as you mentioned before, do you feel sometimes non-binary ident- identification is a, a safe place for some people as yourself who are unsure, oh, I'm a trans guy. I'm a, I, it's kind of a safe place. And I think that's lovely. I, I think it's lovely. Um, <clears throat> so what I would uh, say to that is, I've never really thought about non-binary gender, like standing alone as like its own separate thing. Um, because, I, I mean, I know a lot of people who are non-binary um, or agender or what have you, and they, they don't really associate themselves with an LGBTQ plus community. They just see themselves as them. And that's like, that's rad. If they want to do that, they can do that. Um, but like, I feel, I feel like within the LGBTQ plus community, there's still a lot, a lot more that needs to be done in regards to non-binary identity uh, in terms of acceptance. Um, and that's a slow journey, but it's, it's a, you agree? All right, awesome, cool. You know, it's a, it needs to be done. It needs to be talked about because uh, the, in, in, in that community, there's a prevalence of, um, of sort of white gay men um, and then they're sort of at the forefront and then there's all these other genders and identities that are not being discussed or brought to the forefront at all. Um, isn't, isn't, it strange, isn't it strange that in the trans community, women seem to be the forefront, but in the non-binary, the, the masculine a matter like you know how how you would it is the forefront it's crazy how that happens yeah. well, i i think that people have kind of forgotten like history or maybe they just don't realize like the whole history of pride like look to what the stonewall riots were. yes stonewall, the stonewall riot. it was trans women drag queen drag queen stra- um, trans women of color yes were really the most vocal who were the first to actually like put their head above water and like say look we're not fitting into how society says that we should fit in. Yeah. So we're going to do something about it. And, and I think with Pride, I think it um it is something that just brings people together. And if, if that's what it should be. Do you think and we should have an equal Pride? Define an equal Pride. What do you mean? Because the term equal can be quite, like, vague. And, you know, do, what do you mean equal Pride? Equal that anybody from LGBTQ plus and allies is welcome. It is not just singularity for um, a, a, a specific gender or it, it's just equality for like just equal. There's no kind of gay pride, trans pride. It's just celebrating, it's just everybody. celebrating everybody. And it's an, inv- it, it's an open invitation to come, hey, come and celebrate for us because it's really cool to be you and it's amazing to me kind of thing i mean like that's that's how it should be isn't it really that's how that's how pride should be but also i'm really proud of like things like trans pride um because i think that in the in the bigger picture i think that uh trans issues do need to be talked about as well as you know it can't i think that um obviously everyone together is a mint it's an immense thing it's an amazing thing it's it's awesome but i think also why not have our own sort of trans pride and you know, non-binary pride. I've I've got ideas. I've got plans to sort of organise a kind of non-binary pride, um, which I think will be excellent. But oh yeah, hell yeah, we need an equal pride where everyone is welcome, regardless of their identity, regardless of their sexuality. Just like all come together. And if you're a nice person, you're a nice person. Doesn't matter what gender you are. Well, I think that's what a lot of pride events are kind of working towards. Yeah, they're kind of working towards just acceptance. Yeah, and then maybe in a hundred years time there will be equal prize because people will have equality i think that is what pride is standing for it's obviously like i was saying before them um, being aware of the past and learning from the past but also using the past to move forward yeah and remember like remember where you came from to know where you're going yeah that's, absolutely, that's absolutely. How I think. and i think um <clears throat> i think that if, if if an equal pride was put forward and it actually happened I believe we have to stand apart at the start. So we have to have non-binary pride, trans pride. We have to have them all apart to get the acceptance and then eventually look at each other as we should be doing in this day and age and just giving us a big cuddle and just coming together as one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've got to divide divide and conquer and we are dividing, but then to come together as a one, do you know what I mean? It's. I think um, we've we've all got our own individual experiences. We've all got our own fight to fight. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we should all be there for each other as one big community. But yeah, we've all got our own fight, haven't we? Our own different fight. Everyone's fight is valid. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. So what, what's next for you? What, what are you doing at the moment? Where are you off to? Where can we see you this year? What is coming up? <laughs> um, I'm going to actually be at the Curious Arts Festival in Newcastle uh, on the Sunday Ooh, the 1st. Um, are you on the ball? Oh, I don't, going to the ball? I want to go to the ball, yeah. I need to get a suit for it, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll be on there yeah. on the Sunday, the 1st of July, definitely, because I'm do doing an event there. Um, so check, check me out there. Um, but yeah, like the, the show, like, got I got um, a lot of messages from young people, um, quite young sort of secondary school, high school people from all over the world telling me, you know, that, about their experience of Genderquake. And what the one thing I want to do, uh, continue to do, is to sort of make YouTube videos and be uh, there as a, like a platform for young people. So that they can, they can direct their parents or people to me and then say, this is me, this person. Because I like to think I explain things quite well um, and I feel confident enough to, to sort of use my own platform for good for young people. But yeah, I've had a few, um, few cool things. I've, I've been offered to, uh, I've been asked to mo model for a genderless makeup company, um, which is quite exciting. Oh. Um, and yeah, just some things in the pipeline. Very <laughs> Well... Speaking of things in the pipeline, obviously I, I, um, I do Now That's Equal magazine <clears throat> with Equal World. I'll touch base with you in the next few days to get something for that because I definitely want to feature you in the magazine. But also, more closer to our heart is we're actually launching Now That's What I Call a Support Group. And it's actually going to be in Heaton. And it's going to oh, be right. every every fortnight if we can do. And we would love you now on, on, on air as well to invite you to come and maybe be a, a patron in that and come yes. in and educate everyone and help them because we live in Newcastle so we're very close yes definitely and I live in Heaton anyway so that's perfect yeah I'm totally up for that so do I <laughs> <laughs> right well that is absolutely brilliant that we are going to have um, you as part as another that I call a support group it's been amazing to have you you have educated me oh, yes yes we're well, always learning always I learning always definitely yeah always awesome learning. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. No problem. Wow. We'll, we'll, we'll see you. Bye-bye, darling. Well, wow, show. Sure. Very informed. Well, guys, that was an amazing show. And I think it was so informative to hear from three different people. Three different opinions. Three different Once opinions again. from one show. Everyone's opinion was a little bit different. I love the fact that Saffron is going to become um, part of an Alatoric Call Support Group which is coming very soon. We're going to leave it here. I have been Fee Louise. And I've been Jossie Yandel. We are going to pop over to um, Trans Radio UK for a little chat if everything's still happening. We literally have a device that's streaming to them. So yeah, it's, there. it's very, very Yay. technical. But thank you so much. Thanks once again, Howie. Uh -huh. And Campbell. And of course, the amazing... Safi. Yes, absolutely perfect. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, and we'll see you in two weeks for a very... Very exciting show. Yes, we have a very exciting guest, so we will see you then. Bye.